Hello, Crystal Cox here from SavvyBroker.com and I'm here today to tell you folks some jokes. Actually, this is the joke book I'm going to be working from today. It's the Antitrust and Real Estate Compliance Guide. And basically this tells us as realtors what we need to do to, not necessarily to protect the real estate consumer, not necessarily laws that will help the real estate consumer, doesn't teach us about forms or what to spot latent defects in a home or how to keep you safe. Doesn't teach us how to keep your money for you. But it teaches us how to abide by the antitrust laws so that realtors can still be realtors and the National Association of Realtors can stay in business. One of the things I wanted to read to you today was, this is called Dangerous Words and Phrases. It says the following is examples of words or phrases occasionally used by salespeople that would permit a judge or a jury to infer that real estate brokers are engaged in an illegal conspiracy. So we're not supposed to say things like, I'd like to lower my commission rate, but the board has a rule. Well, the MLS board does not have a rule on what the commission should be, so they don't violate antitrust. But peer pressure does violate antitrust. My first year of real estate, I tried to charge less commission. Some of the realtors went door to door telling people I couldn't charge 5% because if I did, the other people wouldn't show my listings. So this was wrong. They also told people that I wasn't offering as much of a service as they was. Well, I was, and I was actually offering more than they were. But, you know, people don't know what to believe. So, the next thing, dangerous words and phrases, is this is the rate that everyone charges. So we're not allowed to say that as realtors, but realtors do say that. So everybody charges 6%, so that's what we're going to charge. Real estate rates are really negotiable. Make sure that your real estate broker is negotiating with you. And also, buyer's rebates in most states are, le are legal now. They used to be illegal, now they're legal. So make sure that your realtor is giving you a rebate. They're legally allowed to, and they should be doing it. The next thing, it's a dangerous word or phrase. The MLS would not accept less than a 120-day listing. You know, the MLS will accept a listing for whatever the broker takes it for. So that, <laughs> that's just dangerous. Anyway, the next one is, before you list with XYZ Realty, you know, any real estate company, you should know that nobody works on their listings. So some realtors boycott other realtors. So if, if the realtors are charging little or they're doing too much for the real estate consumer or just kind of doing better than the other realtors, they might try to take them down. And one of the ways to do this is to spread the word that nobody shows their listing. Well, that violates antitrust laws and it's dangerous to say, but it happens all the time. And then, let's see, the next one is, you're not allowed to say that the board requires all realtors to make their salespeople join. Now, the MLS board, the National Association of Realtors, and the board that I used to belong to did make the salespeople join. So, if the real estate broker is a member of the National Association of Realtors, they're not allowed to have salespeople that work for them that are not members. I had salespeople in my office that wanted to work for me, but they did not want to be in the MLS. They didn't want the expense and they didn't want the drama of it. So they didn't want to be a part of the MLS. Well, my local MLS office, Association of Realtors, said that if I'm a realtor, they have to be a realtor too. So the antitrust book says that you're not allowed to say that the board requires all realtors to make their salespeople join, but they do. So, you're not allowed to say that the best way to deal with such and such realtor is to boycott him. Well, they boycott realtors all the time. And mostly it's because if a realtor gives a consumer a break, they get boycotted by the other realtors. Because, you know, in essence, a lot of realtors don't do a whole lot for 6%. You know it's true. And, let's see, the next one is, if you valued your services as a professional, you wouldn't cut your commission. So they're not allowed to say to another realtor that, you know, if you value yourself, then you would charge a higher rate. Well, I value myself a lot, but I also value, value the people who work very hard for their money. And if I'm going to make $6,000, you know, five to 8000 let's see, you know, commission is variable, of course. 
So if I'm going to make that much money on $100,000, you know, a lot of the times the realtor ends up making more than the seller walks away with. So why can't I cut their rate? Why can't I give them rebates? You know, how is this valuing my services less? Anyway, it says in here you shouldn't say that or you buy the antitrust, but realtors do say it all the time. The next thing is, let's see, well that's pretty much it for the dangerous words. There's a lot of information in here and we will talk about it later, but the biggest thing with antitrust and the fighting over the years with the realtors is because the discount brokers wanted to be in the MLS and the realtors wouldn't let them. Some of the other things going on with the MLS and lawsuits, yes, are buyers rebates and um, the Department of Justice is winning this for the most part wherever they go. And so the Department of Justice is trying to create better avenues and better markets for the realtors. But it's it's slow going. So we'll talk about discount brokers and flat rate brokers in <coughs> excuse me in another post. Thank you very much for your time and I hope you all have a great day.